guys around the world and beyond the globe, welcome back to another episode of Guy Stuff. I'm your host, Anthony Claiborne, coming to you from the USA. And John S. be coming to you from Thailand, other side of the planet, with a bunch of lag, apparently. So we're going to see how that lines up on this thing. You know what I'm saying? That's I'm excited, right. man. Let's do this. That's right. Look, man. So we we are. First, I want to say thank you to everybody who's uh, jumped on board and is getting involved mm. with this. Uh, it's been so cool to uh, see you guys responding. And what it tells me, it tells me that dudes are looking for something. I was actually talking with my wife a while ago. I made a Walmart grocery run this morning. Pickup. I didn't go inside. I went for pickup. So. I got Mad Max to drive, uh, John Rambo uh, rode shotgun, and Katniss Everdeen was Overwatch, and uh, we went to Walmart, and I was telling her, I was like, hey, guys are responding to this. I'm like, I think we've tapped into something that the guys are looking for. And, and and warning, what do you think, John? And we're going to introduce our friend in a minute. Y'all, y'all, he, we're just going to leave him awkwardly down there in the <laughs> box like the unwanted Brady kid. <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> Just for the, the YouTube viewers, he's just sitting there looking at us like all ashamed. We should just mute him the whole time. Just, <laughs> just have nothing but his face, ask him a bunch of questions, and then watch his face respond. Um, yeah, man, I'm excited to see um, what's happening, man. Like People are actually responding uh, on, the, on the Facebook page, and I, nobody's even heard the podcast yet. So hopefully when they hear it, they they're like, all this leave. sucks. <laughs> and like, I'm out. <laughs> Y'all are horrible. Um <laughs> We're hoping that doesn't happen, but for now, man, people are coming on board, and we're excited. We thank you. Want to thank every one of you guys for uh, for jumping on board, and uh, hopefully by this point in the in the the the, the podcast, they've at least been a few episodes in, and they're still listening. So, okay. those that are sticking with us, thank we you. Thank we, both of you. We love you. <laughs> we do thank both of you for listening. If you, so, want, if you want to come on the show, just email us. <laughs> I'll give you my personal number too. You can just That's call me. Fantastic. Good. I, this is not a dating service, Joe. <laughs> oh man, come on, man. I gotta have some kind of like social life. Corona's took everything from me. I know. It's right? taking it all from me. I know, right? It's messed up. It's crazy. I hate Rona. I'm ready for Rona to be gone, man. Uh, but joining us today, jumping into our, our good friend who's joining us today, uh, is my good friend and worship leader, actually at Crossroads Church, located in beautiful Benson, North Carolina. Uh, home of Mule Days. If you need something fun to be a part of, we have Mule Days. Uh, his name is Matthew Williams, aka Matt Williams. Matt is a graduate of Campbell University, the Fighting Camels. You may know them from once per decade NCAA basketball fame. <laughs> I'm you say sorry. the spitting camels? <laughs> the the yeah. spitting camels? That's what, that's what it was. Spitting camel graduates. We love you. We're joking. Um, husband to Jana, who is very clearly the brains behind the operation. Um, and we know what that's like. And don't hold this against him, but he is a rabid New England Patriots fan. And I, I just yeah, don't understand why, but Matt, thanks for joining us. <laughs> thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, appreciate the intro. Yes, they, they used to be the spitting camels. We got too many lawsuits, so went to the fighting camels. Uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, just uh, you guys are – I can't even – it's been like two minutes of this. I can't even handle it. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm done. Why did I agree to come on this thing? Why did I agree? We thank you for coming on. I do have a question for you, though, Matt. I mean, you did, did you go to college for worship? Leader, that was your, your, your uh, major? Yeah, actually, it was, um, so Campbell doesn't really have a worship leading um, degree. Um, they, they call, mm. It's called church music. So mm. it's a little more heavily based on the traditional side of things. Um, but they really, mm. really like, if you go to Liberty and get like a worship leader degree, they'll, they'll go a lot more into like worship services. I still study mm. music really as like the mm. core center of what I did, which obviously I love. Um, so it was, it was more church church music like your traditional cool. MP, all that kind of stuff um, so but when you graduate do they give you do they like fit you for a pair of skinny jeans or does that like come later is that like <laughs> is that like when you graduate they hand you that with your diploma or is that the diploma like plastered on there or something how does that work 
it was awkward. I had to get, I had to walk up, and then they said, "All right, drop your pants." I was like, "What are you talking?" About? <laughs> <laughs> you got the gown to cover everything. And you're just, yeah. you're know, like hand in your regular pants here, your skinny pants. And I think I passed out a few moments later because I couldn't breathe. <laughs> it's it's, it's yeah. like the courses back in the 1600s. It's like just, just sucks it all in. <laughs> 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 but I, I, I will give you props, though. I was expecting you to walk in with a V-neck on, and that didn't happen. Oh, but Anthony, he's he got one on. Yeah. He's rocking the V-neck, man. He's like, he's all up in it, man. That's messed up. <laughs> Somebody uh, has to keep culture up in this thing, man. I might have one V-neck right now, so I think that's where I'm at. But. Hey, don't let him fool you, John. If he stood up, that shirt tails down to his knees. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt, stand up, please. Will let's you, let's see it. Just, let's see it, man. Let's are you wearing pants? Come on, man. Yeah, it's hey. just a regular, regular shirt. See, there's a That thing is like 75 feet long. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> oh, my God. I bet, I, I, bet, I bet he's not wearing no Levi's or Wranglers. I bet he's got some, like, diesel, bougie, <laughs> um, like, some, like, <laughs> come off the back of a truck in Nicaragua somewhere, like, imported through the fields made by like the, the little the the hands of the orphans tunnels. <laughs> it's exactly like to, it's like Tom's, but for ju- jeans, like Jesus jeans. It's like Tom's. <laughs> That's I did. Jesus jeans. Look, just come up with that. Oh, we're going to like have to like uh trademark that. Exactly. Jesus jeans. That's so a new trademark. Does that mean like it. for every pair of jeans you buy, we give a pair of jeans to a dude named Jesus. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Aren't you a worship leader? Every one of them, every pair of jeans that you buy, a worship leader is clothed. We'll have a with commercial a pair of with Sarah jeans. McLaughlin in the arms of the angels. In the arms like. of a worship leader. Yes. Support your local worship leader. Some right now, somewhere right now, a worship leader cannot fit into his skinny jeans. <laughs> no, that's, that's serious. Right there. I have, normally, I have bigger thighs than normal guys. That's, that's <laughs> football. You got them birds and hips. Everything. I, some somehow, I just got them. And so, like, when you go to the store and you got the right waist size, your freaking thighs won't fit in there. I'm like, Frick. you know, like <laughs> I have what? that where the pants rip of the crotch constantly, but it's the price I'm on. He has to have the uh, new crotch, especially sewn into his jeans, like a pair, like a. I'm not lying to you. I oh asked God, my mom to sew two of my pants right now because I'm not willing to let go. <laughs> it's got like a denim cod piece that just like fits on to all of his pants. Just, they're like they're like chaps with a cod piece sewn into them. That just I has to wear them. Now, now see, I I was oh, I wear, like I I like wear the hybrid skinny jeans. You know, mine say skinny. But they're more like just mm. tight fitting. They're jeggings. I, I like. <laughs> yeah, they, so I like to wear boots with mine. I'm. I, our band is interesting at, at our church because I feel like everybody's got their own kind of personality in the band. It's like a. It's like a band. I mean, you've got everybody's got their own kind of personality. It's, it's kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> skinny jeans um, do definitely come with a diploma. Uh, we asked Matt on today, gang. You may be wondering, you know, because we have a variety of, of different types of people in here. And we have, you know, people who go pew pew for a living. We have people who go uh, uh, for a living. And we asked on a worship leader. And, and I want to talk with you guys today. The title of this, if we're going to give this podcast a title, it's like, just surrender, dude. Like, like just surrender. And we, we asked, uh, Matt was recently on my Tend to Win podcast, which Matt will tell you is a different vibe uh probably more subdued and uh so but uh i i you know we talked about this uh this question there um you know of of what led him to become a worship leader and you know i I want him to speak to that but then we're gonna jump and john will take us into talking a little bit more um we just want to talk about guys in worship and 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 i'm just gonna kind of lay this out there uh, to tell you where we're going with this, guys, we we again, this is a, this is a podcast for people who follow Jesus and are, are really chasing after living a life uh, that represents Christ, or maybe you're just curious about what that looks like. And 
part of that is something a lot of men are, something that a lot of men are very uncomfortable with and we need we want to address that and talk about how we can kind of move beyond that but a, a lot of guys seem to be uncomfortable uh, with worship settings and so we're going to talk about that in a minute so before we do that though just very quickly Matt give us just a thumbnail sketch of uh, what led you because you're a former football player you know that, that's your thing you loved you liked football what took you from from you know football to like like pads putting on pads to like singing over top of pads yeah see what I did there you know it, it, when the world looks at it um, I think that's two, almost two opposites there if we're just, just talking to guys here, you know, football has to be considered, other than maybe like UCF or, or anything like that, or excuse me, UFC, um, you know, football is considered one of the manliest things you can do, um, except for the whole quarterback putting his hand up. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit squirrely. It's a little bit shady. I'm just saying. Uh, our guys are going to the shotgun. I'm just saying. <laughs> but uh, football, you know, I loved hitting another guy in the mouth. Like, that was, like, you didn't get more of a rush than when you, like, smacked the guy, you laid him out. That was just awesome. And, like, uh, like I told Anthony on my uh, po- on the podcast the other day, um, I thought that's where I'm going. Like, my, I just – I studied, I ate and bred or, and breathed football. Um, like, I knew all the stats to my favorite teams. I knew – I just knew everything. Um, you know, Football just didn't work out with uh, for me with injuries, concussions, and other stuff like that. So um, left high school, had no idea what to do, um, you know. But I'd always was a part of music as I grew up. Now, when I was playing football, I always I never wanted to tell anyone I could sing because it just it didn't feel manly enough. I think I struggled with that a lot. It's like I want to be a manly guy, um, you know, because I did, you know, I secretly loved Broadway musicals. I secretly loved to sing and all these other things. I'm like. Oh, that was, oh. I was like, don't. Yeah. <laughs> I love these things because, you know, that a football player doesn't love these things. A football player, you know, you know, obviously I wasn't going to go out and drink it, but he's all about beer and women and, and all this mm. other stupid, you know, crazy stuff. Um, but, and I, I did a really, I did a really long story on Anthony's podcast, but just to make a long story short, um, really got, had moments in my life um, from when I was a young kid to when I became, you know, a, a, a teenager till, you know, 2021, I saw that he was just using music as like, almost as like, as this comforter provider for me. Um, and he just kind of led the way. And I there's not like one moment, there was just a billion moments where he's just shaping me to where I was supposed to be. Um, you know, so it's, I just kind of fell into it. I can honestly say that Leading worship, I, there's nothing I ever thought I'd be doing. Um, it is quite the opposite of what I thought. I would be doing. Um, you know, when I was <clears throat> I was a pastor's kid, so I, I didn't really want to be a part of the church because I was just tired of being at church. And now I'm always at church, so <laughs> but it's a good thing now. Um, but you know, just like I said, God has just a way of just using all these little moments, just taking you to this place. So if I had time to write my autobiography it's like I, I could just point like to a thousand little little pinpoints uh, of just how he used music to remind me of his goodness and his creation and i just want to do that as well and show other people his goodness and his creation and his power and majesty through music so that's that's, that's what i can say my question though is like you said you you were you were you know in high school and you could sing and you didn't want anybody to know it didn't you notice like the singers get the girls man i mean like you get a you get some cheerleading chicks with some with football but you get all the girls you sing you be like you know break out something that that never was like a draw for you man like yeah, what was I, that i never thought it was, <laughs> like, i guess in my youth group it wasn't necessarily the singers it was the guitar players so i ah. I definitely play guitar for my high school praise band, and that definitely got me one or two of the girls in the youth group. <laughs> one girl specifically told me that she said, yeah, I, I was attracted because of your guitar playing. I'm like, okay, right. okay. Yeah. I'm good with that. Whatever works. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, uh, I don't know. I guess I just, I just there's just this, this mindset, though, like, you know, no one on our football team sang or did anything like mm. Artsy, creative. Yeah, I didn't want to be the weirdo, like the the one guy, because like I said, I still loved all of it. Like 
I yeah. sang in the shower every morning. I'm, you know, at church you would just sing because that's what you knew what to do. But then when you're outside of church, you know, we'll get into that. Yeah. When you're outside, yeah. you shut that stuff down, right? You don't even let the ladies see what, what you really like. So my dad didn't raise me up that way. So don't think that I grew yeah. up in a home, but just like, I guess the people I surrounded myself with, um, that's the kind of mindset that I, I, I let creep into my brain. Yeah. Uh, I just couldn't be, I, could, I wasn't allowed to be my real self. Even though I, I love football, there's still so yeah. much of my real self, my authentic self that I wasn't yeah. allowed to be shown to people. That, yeah, that, that kind of goes into the question I want to ask you. One of the questions I want to ask you is like, as guys, a lot of guys may not be comfortable like, you know, singing in church or singing in front of people or singing just around people. Um, they may see it as like, I know I grew up um, very, you know, backwoods, Mississippi. If you were a guy, none of the dudes sang. Like, you just looked over and Papa was like, <laughs> you know, just looking around. And, and you're like, that's what kind of grew up. And if you were like, man, should I sing? I mean, is this, you know, it grew up a little different ways. And there's some people are actually just, like you said, don't know how to express themselves that way or are never been raised in that or are never been taught that. Um, what do you think as like, as a worship leader, as you're trying to get people to, to, to freely come in to, to praise God as a corporate uh, uh, group body, um, how, how do you think we can, as a worship leader, how do you try to get people to, or what do you think people can do to get more connected to, to, to actually more free in worship to actually um, to do that? Is there something that you specifically try to do or have a, have a, um, a theory or, a, or a, you know, a scheme, you like, you know, punch in a pump up and a bunch of oxygen in the church or something, or like, you know, <laughs> that's what's is there, that fog. Is the fo that's exactly. The fog machine's laced with stuff. I'm saying, um, <laughs> uh, does that make sense though? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And like, if I knew the exact formula, I think I'd be making over a hundred, you know, million dollars. If I knew <laughs> I can show up to your church, but like, here's what you got to do. I wish I could be doing that. Um, so just to, just to go off of that question, I think there's, there's a couple things there. Um, I think for guys, I think it's always going to be important where you just take the guys um, and you, you, you separate them from everyone else, from the children and from the women. Um, mm. You have to do guys, um, guy meetings. And so we started doing guy um, worship services um, at our church. Mm. And Anthony can attest to this. Those are some of the most powerful moments in our in our church uh, worship culture because they're, mm. they're actually being real with themselves. For some reason, what I'm noticing um, is that uh, they just don't want to be real. They don't want to be this. They don't want to show their intimacy or their emotions around their children or around the women. Um, and it's that's just such a hard barrier to get over. Um, so I think it's definitely important to get them separate, um, have moments, and then you teach them in there. But then you encourage them, like, if, if they're a strong Bible-believing Christian, you just have to, yeah. just have to um, that's, you know, that, not to go that way, but that's our strong, that's, that's our greatest tool there. And then you say, hey, look at David. This is obviously the greatest man who ever walked. King David has to be considered top five. I mean, boy was a musician he could compose he could sing but he also took down a bear you know he and and who even knows the other creatures he <laughs> took down he had to take down shepherd right yeah. he took down creatures and survived um he killed goliath with just a few stones um you know he he became a king this this little shepherd boy became a king um but he was it was it was all the parts of man that you think you're supposed to have he was this killing hunter but he's also this musician who's not afraid to dance before jesus to you know he this might i know it'll sound crazy a lot of people he danced so much he got it out of his clothes right he was mm, yeah. naked before god but that was you know anthony's title just surrender dude that's surrender you know mm. you're worshiping so hard you have no idea about your surroundings and i think it's somebody to really uh, you know, idolize, um, or, or put, not idolize, excuse me, but to really use as a good inspiration. You know, guys like Daniel as well, who, who stood his ground as a man in, in his faith and what he believed in, you know, to the point where he got thrown into the lion's den. 
And he still stood his ground. But yet, what did he do before that? He was praying consistently inside his home. Um, so you just read and you see all this faith. You see all these guys being men, but also being godly men. Um, hmm. So for, for the believer who's not willing to sing or to worship, I think you got to go look at these men and see how God blessed them. You know, mm-hmm. we say that Dave, King David was a man after God's own heart. And yeah. how blessed was King David with, because of all that? And so maybe you turn around and say, guys, you want to be blessed? You want to see God do something amazing in your life? Pursue his heart. You know, mm-hmm. be one after. God's own heart and I think the intimacy of worship has to play said there's no perfect formula we're just trying on whatever we can being a worship leader is really just being a teacher um when you get up there you say hey the bible says lift your hands the bible says dance the bible says sing let's try it and so I think over time you see you see some good things and um you know, with the, you know, pursue it. So maybe we can teach them younger because there's a lot of guys, um, you know, I didn't grow up in Mississippi, but I, I grew up, you know, seeing the guys hands down, just kind of stoic, you know, kind of thing. They just didn't get it. They don't, un- they didn't, they didn't get it per se. So, um, yeah, that, that hopefully that answers your question there. Yeah, it, it does, man. That kind of, it kind of goes into it. And that's one of the things I think, um, a, a quick question, uh, maybe we can do is You want to do this on the, on the side of the break there, man, or what do you want to do? You look like you had a question there, Anthony. No, I was going to interject something, but you, you feel free. Go ahead, man. I, I'll jump in in a second. Okay, no, this, this quick question. Uh, like, so it, it kind of goes in, like, uh, into that, 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 that um, worship uh, atmosphere. Like, if, I think if you're in, a, in an atmosphere where, uh, that's, where, where everybody, like, the, you know, the lights are low and they got the, the fog machines and all this stuff going on, it tends to create an atmosphere where people are a little more um, – I guess, feel a freer, I guess, because people are, you know, kind of hidden or whatever. What would you say to like men who go, like I grow at my home church in Mississippi or any churches around most, you know, Bible Belt churches who are more, uh, you know, old school hymns, piano music only, you know, uh, you know, how do you find your, your, your freedom to worship even in that type of environment versus the, what kind of contemporary Christian churches are doing with the almost stage production, which some would say is even, you know, kind of over the edge or, or you know, over, overdone to, to, to falsely create that environment. How would you think, how would you, what would you say to those guys are saying, look, I want to worship, but I'm going to a church that sings only all the songs are before 1863, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just to be a side, side thing for a lot of, for a lot of maybe guys who don't understand the production side of, of churches like we do, um, we can actually point to the Bible. Um, a lot of stuff in Revelation about, what heaven is going to look like. Mm. You know, it talks about the many colors. It talks about mm. this smoke emanating from the throne of God. You know, so mm. not to be those people, but we're just saying, if you have a problem with what we're doing, we're really, I know some people don't do this because of the Bible. They just want to do it just because. Mm. Uh, we're like, mm. man, worship is supposed to be representation of what heaven is. Is mm. heaven touched earth, right? We have that engagement with the Father in this one act of worship and see like, there's nothing else on this earth that we'll be doing um, that is like heaven except for when we sing to the Lord and when we pray. Mm. So when we have those moments, we just, we're trying to just imagine almost what heaven's going to be like. And so for us, like, you see a sunset, how would it not be plenty of colors? How would it not, you know, clouds, right? Clouds, mm. clouds are the reason why the sky lights up so much sometimes because oh, yes. it's light. So like with our, with our haze machine, with our lights, we're, just, we're trying to, to showcase and say God created all of this, and so that we believe heaven's this, but a billion times greater, right? We have no idea what it looks like. Um, so for us, that that's where we land with that, and like we we mm-hmm. did the because, like you said, um, we believe that people are more comfortable if they don't if they believe other people aren't seeing how they worship. Now, mm-hmm. be all out abandoned? Yes. Um, mm-hmm that way no. they're always going to be a little insecure like you know i'm sure the three of us are sometimes if we're going super hard and our faces are just you know just going like crazy like spits flying everywhere we're like <laughs> we're hitting people with our arms it's, it's not the most like attractive thing in the world like mm. if you're forced to be next to your wife and you're just like, you're like oh, you know just 
Um, she's not looking at me like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's my man. <laughs> Look at him go. Of course, I do know. Well, we'll, we'll get into that later. Um, but to, to really hit where you're talking about, the traditional, uh, traditional church, um, I love ev- most every hymn that's ever been written. I think there's something so raw and so beautiful and so poetic about these words. There's modern day hymns being written now. Uh, Matt Popper wrote a great one, His Mercy is More. Um, one of my favorite songs right now. Um, there's, um, I wish I could name off a couple more uh, off the top of my head. Um, but I think it's going to be important for the man if he wants a traditional church. I think he has to find the, the right traditional church first. Mm-hmm. Um, Anthony and I were talking about um, worshiping in spirit and in truth the other day. And what I've come to see is that a lot of traditional churches focus too, so much on truth, they forget about the spirit. Mm. And, but there's a lot of contemporary churches that focus so much on the spirit mm. and not enough on the truth. I love yeah. my church. That's why I've been here for seven years because I believe we're trying to find the middle. Yeah. We might side with one one day. We might side with one on the other. Yeah. Um, but for the, for, for the guy, he needs to find the right, the right fit church, the one who's doing spirit mm. and truth because I believe you can have a spirit interaction singing, yeah. you know, how great thou art. Right. Um, mm. So the first thing we have to do is find the right, the right setting, the, the right music leader, the pastor who are, who's, who's there to worship Jesus, not for a ritual, right? Not for a religious thing. I think that's why a lot of people have gone away from a traditional church standpoint, or a lot of younger people, um, because they're not into the ritual per se. I'm not saying that it is. I'm just saying like there's a lot of people that, I don't know, that, that's how it comes across per se. There's no, there's no approach. And I think that's why a lot of guys, like it because they don't have to show emotion. Mm. Um, the, the, the little break they missed uh, some version of "Beat It" that John was playing that I've never heard before. I'm not sure what that low budget production of that was, but it was great. So <laughs> that was elevator music, baby. That was my waiting yeah. room music to come back in on the break. Okay, waiting room music. What? We no expense spared here at Guy Stuff. So we have been talking about worship, as I said, with uh, Matt Williams. And I want to take a minute to explore some things he was talking about and just guys in general and how I feel like we've been, in a sense, programmed uh, with mixed messages uh, from the culture around us. And I think it plays heavily into why guys don't feel uh, – moved, if you will, to, to be more expressive. Um, I've talked about this before and, you know, most of us guys have different, you know, know, we're, we're programmed, we are wired, we're hardwired from God, I believe to be protectors and defenders and to even be fighters in a sense, uh, in a positive sense, not a jerk who walks down the hallway at school and, you know, shoves a kid and knocks his book bag off his back or these days his iPad out of his hands uh, but you know we're, we are we are made for battle and I think we've done a great job in our culture of helping men engage that part of their brain a little bit you know we've got Steven Seagal we've got Rambo we've got you know all those things but Yes, if you if you see John John over there doing stuff, if you're watching this on YouTube, he's making some sort of Ip Man um, kung fu type moves, which I love the Ip Man movies, even though they're not remotely close to his real life. Oh, anyways, I digress. I digress. We got we we'll have to go with that on the on the movie on the movie series. We'll have we, to just talk about the complete asinine things that happen in stupid movies. I know like if if look just totally side kung fu would be the most amazing martial art if it were if it was real <laughs> yeah. if, it was, if it was real but anyways <laughs> my bad my bad I mean all you kung fu guys that don't like start throwing some chi at me and try to kill them else out of there be yes, all right. do not be all right. get we'll me just... with your touch of death so <laughs> the monkey fist of the nose but Hey, sorry, my bad. It's all good. The 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 thing is, nothing's one dimensional, and this is where I want to go with this. I, I don't know of anything that has one dimension in nature that God has created. God is not one dimensional. The the same God that created the platypus and was like that is hilarious. 
And the same God that, you know, when you get up in the morning and literally he's painted a new sunrise Mm -hmm. is the same God who, you know, basically crafted David into this warrior king. Mm -hmm. But he's the same God who made David a poet and a musician. And I think, guys, we, we feel like sometimes we have to be one or the other. Would you agree, John, that we feel like we, we kind of, we get, it's like, I'm, I'm a jock or I'm a musician yeah. or no, you're, you're, you can be all these things. You can be creative and be strong, both. Yeah. I'm wondering, like, I don't know. This is, I mean, we, this is just in case you guys don't know who can't see us or hear our voice or actually pay attention to podcasts at all. We're old. We're old. We're, 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 we're over the hump. We're we over the, the hill. Term we are seasoned. We are we're well seasoned. We we are we are above the the um the forty year old mark, right? Yes. So I don't know. Like it seemed like when we were growing up, that was definitely much. You know, one dimensional. You're a jock. You're a prep. You're whatever. Those those things were very much. You had those niche things, and if you know, if you wanted to write poetry, you were gay. You know, whatever you wanted to do, like it was it. Um, or if you like Broadways, you know, I mean, you're, I mean, you're probably knocking on the door. Anyway, um. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's a stab. It's messing with you, bro. Um, anyway, that's I mean, it's one of those things where, where that was I think was very something that was it was instilled, like I said, in us by our environment. But it seems to me, and this is something that I would say maybe a good thing in the culture of now that that tends to be more pluralistic uh, in today's culture, maybe where you have the ability uh, for kids to like Broadway, like you, you be a dude and love Broadway shows. Nobody's gonna you know mess with you. For the most part, um, I mean, if you're on the show, you mess with. But um, and for, in actual real life, no one's gonna mess with you, um, you know, or, or things like that. That seems to be then that that may be me kind of not seeing all the culture out there because I'm pretty isolated. Um, but I mean, would you would you agree, especially somebody that's younger and in a artistic field? Would you say that seems to be more of the the culture now that that's in that dynamic of not having to be just one dimensional that's almost inbred in inbred um uh, in <laughs> <into, laughs> we're not all from mississippi john <laughs> hey man i'm just kidding North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> we love you i'm joking we do um but i mean does it seem like it's almost ingrained now that 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 people sh- are more open to uh artistic expression as well as some of the uh, the more uh, masculine-ish things. What do you think there? Yeah, uh, I think, and I think you, you're on the right track with what you're saying, how the world's shifting. Um, a lot of people think it's bad what's happening in our culture, the culture change. And I would say there are things that the enemy plays and ludes our mind into thinking. Um, because once you say one thing's okay, you know, there's... Yeah can't ever recreate a line, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, there is a sense of the world is seeing that manly, manly man is not necessarily the right answer, right? Mm-hmm. Because the manly man is not going to love his 16-year-old daughter the way that she needs it, you know? Mm-hmm. The, you know, the manly man is not going to, you know, how is he going to be when his son comes to him and says, Dad, I'm struggling with these thoughts about another guy. You know, how would a manly man handle that? He would beat it out of him, right? But, you know. <laughs> My dad did. <laughs> did he? Did he really? <laughs> Just kidding. No, it's kidding. <laughs> no more Broadway. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> See, you thought it was safe. It was yeah. not. <laughs> but I would definitely say I think the culture is, is shifting now to where um, they kind of say you can be whatever you want. Um, I would say like that helps with us engaging. Like, like I said, I felt so, I felt so weird because I was a football player that loved music mm. so much where I'd like mm. just this art, artistic creation. I just was mm. so about it. I, I was afraid to show it because even, let's see, that was about 10, you, 10, 10, 12 years ago, even, even then it was, we weren't at the place where we are now where it's okay to just express yourself. Right. I think it's really about expressing what's inside of you. Um, and so I think uh, there's a danger with that sometimes. I think we still need to teach young men what God's man needs to be. Um, yeah. 
you know, you don't have to be Arnold Schwarzenegger with his muscles, or I guess The Rock is more relatable today. Um, <laughs> you know, a huge homeboy is. You don't have to be yeah. him to protect your family. You don't have to be him to guard your wife, um, to, to love your children. Um, mm. You know, it's so funny how the Bible never says, you know, care, you know, care, carry a sword to protect your to family. No, Paul says, husbands, love your wife. Husbands, love your kids. Um, mm. Never, never did it say, you know, discipline them or the, the things that we think we're supposed to always do. It, it actually says the opposite. Um, I'm going to push back on that one. Hold up. Hold no, no. up. <laughs> this is why we love this. We get together and talk. <laughs> We hash it I, out. If you did pick the whole Bible, it does talk about the sword. It does talk about this and that. Discipline, so I, okay. I'm definitely with you. I believe. Okay, cool. I believe. I, in but I, think I, believe. Matt, I think what Matt's trying to say is, 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 is yes, those things are important, but done in love. It's, it's. Yeah. When I see a kid crying in the store, I want to go slow. <laughs> uh, that annoys me. Uh, <laughs> but. I, I'll tell you I gotta go back. Oh, sorry, I, 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 I was going to digress on the story, but sorry, I keep going. Keep going. I mean, sorry. I guess I'm just so fortunate that I grew up with a dad mm-hmm. like I did. You know, my dad is ultimately yeah. my hero. Um, he he just he emulated what a godly man should be. Did he get everything right? Heck no. Yeah. And I would tell that to his face. Um, but he, did he shape who I am today? Absolutely. Um, I don't think he ever. He always let my mom do the do the spanking. I I think he just he wasn't there. Um, really? Because he would tear us up if he did. Um, <laughs> See, yeah. I had a rule for all you dads out there who are who do the spanking mm. thing. I'm just gonna tell you what I did. They're older now, so DSS can't come get me. Um, <laughs> when I would spank my kids, I had a rule because I have. Uh, a temperament. I mean, if you're watching this on the podcast, you can see the red in my beard and you know that probably, you know, that there's a temper in there. Right. So I would limit myself to three swats, one for the father, one for the son (laughs) and one for the Holy spirit. Never more than three, never more than three, because I, I, that forced me to like, not be crazy. And we could talk about that a whole nother show, but that, that, I understand, man, because like that's one of the things that I think. think um, like for uh, our rule is, I've I won't whip you, man. Mm-hmm. If I'm mad, mm, you need to go to your room for a little bit. Let me calm down, and then I'm gonna tell you what up, you know. And so um, <laughs> that was something that me and my wife really had to like think through because you know we've you know grew up in a different time where you got beat with anything that was near you. Like if there was an extension, I remember I remember watching my mom chase my brother around the house. No man, she she hit away from the state fair that was like five feet long, four feet long, and was chasing my brother around the house, beating his tail. And I'm like, I see it, so I'm like, whoa! And so I jump and run, and because I don't want to get swung at, and she's swinging at me now. I ain't even doing anything wrong, and she. I mean, that was (laughs) different. You got hit with whatever was around you. But we didn't want that for our kids. We didn't want, we want to say, all right, let's, all right, discipline's good. Like you're saying, it's discipline's good. But let's learn how to control that. What's the point of discipline? Is the point of discipline is just to beat their tail? Um, or is it to grow them to be a better person? To for the understand this is wrong, you know? And so I think that's. John, what you saying, don't, don't discipline them angry. I think that's mm-hmm. what a lot of guys struggle with. They want to respond yeah. right in that moment. And that's why yeah. the Bible talks so much about patience, right? You have mm. to be patient for that right mm. time of discipline. Um, and I think, I think my parents did a good job with that. Um, you know, just, just, but I was, I was such a dumb kid, just rebellious. <laughs> uh, you know, I was, I was definitely the black sheep of the family. And it's so funny that I'm the only one now that went into ministry. It's just how, it's how God works. Exactly. Um, you got a sense of humor. It's good. I don't- like Jesus. Let's, let, me, <laughs> let me get back to that, that topic where I'm thinking about, you know, guys just guys want to be a guy. And I'm like, I'm with mm. you. I want to be a guy. I want to do guy mm. things, which we think yeah. sometimes is stupid. Let's go blow something up. Let's go push something off a roof. Like Definitely. <laughs> like, I was the kid that put uh, little explosives in jelly donuts and put them on my neighbor's front porch. So oh, that's awesome. Um, that's what stuff. 
I was into. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, if, if we just had to say, who, do, who are we supposed to be most like? And that obviously is Jesus mm. Christ. And I look, all right, what mm. a man was he? You know, mm. Jesus has some power. He freaking mm. raised his hands and stopped the storm. You know, we want to talk about manly power. You show me a man that can stop a storm, and then I'll get, I'll mm. bow down before them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, so whenever you think about Jesus, don't don't just think like that he was a sissy. Like I don't yeah. I don't think Jesus that way. He had the power of God flowing through him. He could do whatever he wanted, um, but he was patient. You, you hit on something, Matt, and I apologize for jumping in. I got to jump in because you you hit on something huge that I think your generation has been the benefit of 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 getting, I think, a more true picture of who Jesus is than what John and I got. You know, flannel graph Jesus growing up, l- l- you know, had blonde, you know, long blonde hair and blue <laughs> eyes, and he was like, he was all poised and looking, you know, like, he, you know, I, what was he looking at? You know what I'm saying? Like, I have no idea what he was looking at in that picture. It was like a band photo of Jesus. You know, he's just looking away. He but like a, out of Zoolander. Or something. Yeah. And that's not Jesus. I, I mean, we're going to talk about Jesus as a dude on the podcast. So I don't want to, and, and we're going to, we're going to wrap up talking about how would he worship? And that's where you were headed. But a lot of, a lot of what we deal with. All right. Look, the enemy is brilliant. Like Satan is, He's real. He's not, I mean, he's real and he's smart. Mm. He's super smart. And a lot of what we think of as manliness in our culture is really a Western construct. If you go to Africa, Mm. you will see soldiers walking, holding hands. You will look it up. Now that is that culture. And, and they don't think it's anything feminine. I'm me. I'm probably not gonna hold John's hand. I mean, come on, man. I mean, I'm show so, my hand, dude. Um, but Which, my, my hands ain't my hands ain't good enough for you or something. You might have them wrong, I mean, they, but <laughs> they look girly hands. But, <laughs> but uh, we, we've we've got to continue. I, I I think it started, so I think we just need to make sure we continue as we go forward in generations to really teach who Jesus really is. And you, you, you're, I love what you said, and I'm going to say this, and I'll hand it back to you. He's cre- he's creative. I mean, he is creator. Mm. I mean, he created women. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jesus. you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You were having a good oh, day. Man. He's like, I have to say, today was a good day. But anyway, mm. um, <laughs> but he, he was having a really good day when he made women. So. I mean that's that's amazing what what he did there, but but in all seriousness, that same creative he's, he's creative, but he's strong too. And even mm. the winds and waves obey him. Mm. I mean, and, and what we've got to work and strive for, I feel like, in being an authentic godly man is that balance where you have the ability, like we talked about with John Korea, you stand ready to defend your home. But you also stand ready to kneel down and put your arm around a crying toddler. Oh. Sorry, you, you lagged a little bit, so I guess we missed. Yeah, I'm, a, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm <laughs> the biggest point. <laughs> the biggest point. I, I, I'm gonna. <laughs> this is what editing's for, right? So I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna backtrack and grab it. Uh, what I what I said was, w- we need to develop as men uh, into men who as our friend John Korea talks about who are able and ready and willing to defend the weak and defend our homes and defend others, but also able to kneel down and hold a crying toddler who scraped their knee. There's, there's gotta be that balance. So Mm. on that note, kind of landing the plane for guys, just breaking it down to the most basic deal. We talked about why men, some reasons why men don't feel comfortable in worship, and and we talked about some things like that, but but wrap it for us in a nice box. If Jesus were walking among us in shoe leather, how would he worship? What what are your thoughts on that? Man, I think um, he would do it exactly as he did back back when he was on Earth uh, twenty twenty thousand plus years ago. 
Um, you know, there's 20,000. Woo! 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 Jesus is old. <laughs> well, he is, he is from eternity past, but hey, yeah, like, he's older. Like, I guess we went Joe Rogan on that thing for a minute. It was, <laughs> he was 20,000 years ago walking on a flat earth. I, I'm sorry, he came down at a big pyramid. Yeah. <laughs> Some of that, some of the, some of that stuff you put in the fog machine. What's in that cup? In your room a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wrong cup. <laughs> he, got, he got his wife's <laughs> cup. <laughs> so you were sick. Take two. <laughs> um. Yeah. So uh, to I, I just have to go off of what what he, what I know about the Bible. What I know about God. Because when you say worship, obviously I have to go so much more than just singing, right? Um, you know, he was patient. You know, I believe um, even when he was trying to, to lead his disciples and he, when he was discipling them, another sign of worship, he was patient with them. How foolish was Peter often, right? How, how just, how crazy was Peter? Peter chopped off a guy's ear, right? When he, mm. you know, just like, hey, uh, there's a day coming where, you know, some stuff's going to go down. Even Peter's just sitting there like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then all of a sudden it happens. He goes, oh, not today. Chop this guy's ear off. And just like, bro, live by the sword, die by the sword. Get out of here. It's like, come on now. So just, and remember when Jesus, he, he, he said, um, how long must I endure, you know, this kind of thing. So it's not that he wasn't, he wasn't frustrated. He's exasperated like, with he these felt, jokers. <laughs> he felt those human emotions, right? The Bible is so clear about how human Jesus was. He felt those emotions. He flipped those tables out of anger in the temple. Um, he got out of the way. So I, I believe he would still come down and he'd be like, what are y'all doing? Right? He would, he would lead us in worship by, by discipling us and by telling us, you're doing this wrong. He told so many people, you're doing this wrong. You know, he'll say, listen to me, point yourself to the Father. Um, but, but I think, you know, if, if he came to our, our worship service, everyone can gather today. He's going to go. I promise you, he'll probably be the one in the first row. He's not a back row Baptist, first row. Um, uh, okay, sorry. Um, I'm lagging on my end a little bit. Is that me? It's not lagging for me. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what. Just This will be a little editing point for me in here. B back up and maybe rehash just a little bit of that, and then we'll... Three megabytes per second. <laughs> Internet is it's lagging. It's lagging for me. It's all them people in my neighborhood watching Netflix. <laughs> Tell, dude, get a hard line run into your house, in your computer. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to. All right. Pick it up, Matt. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Um, are we recording? Yeah, we never stopped. I just got to edit it out. Um, this will so, be in the Patreon thing. <laughs> Jesus, Outtakes. <laughs> so if Jesus came to your church, whenever we can gather again, I believe he'd be on the front row, you know, because he's, he's in it to win it. Um, but I honestly believe that you would find Jesus on his knees most of that worship service. Oh, that's good. Uh, the surrender and the and the magnitude of what he knows. Of course, he knew all that God was because God was coursing in him, right? As man and fully God, fully man, fully God. Um, but how many times was he off on his own praying on his knees? How many times was he just pleading to the Father, you know, talking to the Father? I, I don't think Jesus would look up at all. I think he would just be in this position of surrender just bowing his head raising his hands um but just being just being humble i think that's the biggest thing you know anthony and i talked on his podcast the other day about uh, positions of humility and surrender we talked about the most humble places being flat on your face on the ground i think you would see jesus there um even though how crazy is that he is fully god you know but yet he's shown us the way of how to be, you know, of a place of surrender to the king, to the to the the creator of the universe. Um, he would just he would just be, and he would be emotional. I believe in his worship. Mm. How many times, you know, right? It, it blows my mind every time that when Lazarus died, Jesus cried about it, mm. fully knowing he's he's about to raise this guy from the dead. He's like, I'm not, I'm going to see this guy, but yet he still cried about his yeah. friend. You know, 
I wish I wish we could know a deeper level of friendship with Jesus and Lazarus. Mm. Why, why it brought them to you? It's still like that's one. That's one thing that always gotten me in that in that dichotomy between, you know, truth and 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 uh, spirit. There's a lot of people like you know you're just there's there's no emotion in my truth. There's no emotion in my worship. This is truth, 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 truth. And the, and but you go, man, if you're standing in front, if you're in the presence of the creator of the universe, you're going to have some emotions. I mean, I would, I would very much guarantee you that if there's no emotion attached to it, you're probably not really worshiping. If there's no emotion. 100% agree. I mean, let's just think about it this way. We're guys, and we're going to be open about guys. Like, if I'm not open and emotional with my wife in our conversations and other things, you know what I'm going at with that. It's like, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to fully appreciate her ever. Mm-hmm. I don't open first myself. You're not going to know her. I mean, mm-hmm. the reality is you're not going to really know her. Let's just say if sex for us was just this physical part of things, there's no reason to have just that one partner for me. It's just like, just go have sex with whomever you want. But God didn't design it that way. God designed it for one person for you to have. Well, some people get mar- you know, remarried because of deaths or other things, but he designed it for you and that one person to have that hmm. connection that is unlike any other connection on the face of the planet. That's why you become one flesh. Um, but you will never... Uh, sorry, no, I was just say well, and it's it's uh the thing is too like and and I'm, I mean this sincerely, there is no more deeper intimacy and and picture really of worship, what worship is supposed to be, than right. the intimacy between a husband and a wife, um and and I mean it 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 really is uh, a picture of that level of relationship we're supposed to be going to, uh and I I, I think we as men, it's something we have to work at. Just like, just like I can promise you, if you don't work at a deeper level of intimacy with your spouse, you're, 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 you may have sex sometimes, but you're not going to really fully experience joy and, and what God intended. Worship is the same way. This relationship, Jesus is not fire insurance hmm. or a get out of hell free card. We, we are being invited into a deeper relationship with our creator. And a lot of where we are as dudes, especially I think in Western culture, uh, you know, we, we, we feel like that scares us. The idea of being intimate with another man, but it's not that kind of intimacy. And, and, and that's where the enemy has been brilliant. He's convinced us to take, Anything that's related to intimacy, period, and knowing someone, he's convinced us to automatically equate it with sex. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and Jesus is calling us, us into something even deeper, more cerebral. And I, I think that's where we're a lot of times falling short and that wall comes up in worship. Yeah. I think I, we, we struggle. I think a lot of men even struggle saying, Jesus, I love you, because we have this image that Jesus is the man. And he was a man. We call him he. We call him him. Um, and I think people, men will struggle with saying, Jesus, I love you. Because they think, like, oh, it's okay. Oh. You know, that should be what that thought of. We have a marriage with him, right? His church. We have a covenant with him. Like, that's that's eternal. That's the thing that saves you forever. It's like, if you can't tell Jesus you love him, mm-hmm. I doubt that you can have, you can really be, I think if we cannot be intimate with God, we can't fully be intimate with anything else. Because I know when I'm, when I'm at my full intimacy with my wife, I can see God's creation. And like, like you said, thank God he created a woman. It was a good like, day. My, my goodness, you know, just like, if you ever want to try to be artistic, just, I'll just say, you've never created a woman before, so you can't oh. do anything. My mind. So, but for guys, it's like if you if you if you want to know why you need to be emotional, intimate, and worship with God, it's because I'm, everything else trickles down from that. Everything starts with your heart connection with God, and everything is better after that. You know, you appreciate nature better after that. You appreciate your 
yourself, but what he's done in you better after that. You, pre you appreciate your wife so much better after that. You realize this is a creation that he has given you that you get to enjoy and spend life with. He did not want you, want you to do life alone. He gave you this person. And then you can then go deeper with her. And I think there's just nothing more beautiful than that. Um, but I know a lot of guys struggle with that. They don't even want to have anything beautiful per se. So, well, even in that sense of like a way, of, if, there, if, there are, if there is a guy that's listening that's struggling with that, I would say, you know, definitely you, you want to uh, pray through that. If you're not, if you're having that much trouble, I would take a look at your prayer life and see what actually is going on there. But if it's something that's really that you're just hard to, to, to connect mentally with that, we kind of talked about this a little bit, a little bit of that femininity that's brought into the church. Um, men, look at it as like, you're like in a battle cry, crying out to God, like just like just man, we're 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 part of God's warriors and God's army that's just crying out to Him. There's actually a song by Shane and Shane called as for, uh, Psalm 46, and I was, I was talking with Anthony, um, and it's it's on my like playlist for getting ready to go in a tournament and fight. You know, it's like it's just just pumped of of this um uh this unity of like man, god we're, we're we're there and you're and you're you're our god and you're gonna you're gonna fight for us and you're gonna break the bows and bend the spears and we start just praying and praising the attributes of god and his mightiness and his and his um and his uh power and his love and everything he is i think that's way i may maybe uh, if if there are guys having trouble making that connection, maybe looking at it in that way and and trying to come at it from that angle may help you kind of break bridge that gap until where you can actually have more of an intimate um, um, uh, connection with with Christ. Does that make sense at all? I mean, Absolutely, yeah. I, that, and and we'll, we'll kind of wrap up with this. If you study the Old Testament, even you know the worship leaders in Israel were very important to warfare. Uh, mm -hmm. They 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 would precede the army. They were there. Yeah, you know, they were they were part of that. And even pagan cultures, their worship leaders would go before the army. And for for us, you know, Matt and I are both worship leaders. I hadn't really talked about that for, for me on this podcast. And for me, when 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 I have the privilege of being in that position, that's how I see it. Mm -hmm. We are. Mm -hmm rallying the troops to go into battle. And I think, men, if you're listening to this, here's our challenge to you today. First, dude, just surrender, all right? That's our title for this podcast. Just surrender. Just let go. And when you are in your church setting or worship setting next, I want to challenge you to view this time as a battle cry instead of, mm. you know, love songs to Jesus per se, like I think we so often do start to picture it as fealty to your King. Mm. You know, mm. you are dedicating yourself to your King to go and fight for him in this battle that he's called us to. All right, John, I'm, I'm Matt. I'm going to give you uh, 10 seconds encapsulate. And then John, I'm gonna let you wrap us up. That was good. Okay, 20 seconds, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, John, it's amazing that you brought up the battle cry because, um, mm -hmm. praise God, you know, when I was going through something a couple years ago, um, I had a pastor in my life say, man, we're just struggling with spiritual warfare. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. And immediately, I'm like, yeah. And so this is a battle. And so I had the great pleasure of actually putting together a song called Battle Cry. One of my favorite you know, ones we play. This is my battle cry. I'm ready to charge the front line. You know, the, mm. says, the Lord is on my side. Uh, mm. uh, our weapons will be our praise to the one who will win all the saying This is our battle cry. This is not our war to win. But this is yeah. my battle cry. I'm charging forward. So mm. thank you for saying that because it just took me back to in that realization. So I'm just, you know, that's a manly thing to do. It's like, this is a battle cry. Satan, you, you got nothing. Like nothing, you know, the same power that raised God from the dead courses mm. in my veins. I can't think of anything more manlier to say. Mm. Um, so just to, for me to sign off, um, uh, man, whomever's listening to this, I know it tapping into the emotions. It's still hard for me, though. Let me just say, 
sometimes I struggle tapping into my emotions with my wife because I want to come across a strong man. I do. Um, but Jesus was the strongest man. Um, and he died for our sins. He took on, he took on so much torture and so much pain. Um, but yet he wept, yet he loved his brothers. Um, he, he loved us. Um, and there's just not a better example of love on this earth. Um, and so, you know, I would encourage every man to go, go, go read the Beatitudes from Matthew chapter five. Um, you want to know why you need to tap into something? You know, it says, blessed are the men, for they, they inherit the earth. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. You know, we, you want to tap into something, be a blessed peacemaker. Be blessed in your pure heart. Um, you just, yeah. I've seen God change so many men in my life um, for the better. Um, yeah. They're not who they were. They're not who the world says they're supposed to be. So um, it's just something special. Just let God do something. What do you have to lose, right? What do you have to lose if you just let Jesus? That's right. I love it. John, wrap us up, man. Take us to the finish line. Yeah, man. I just think um, you know it's that it's that like like Anthony said, and, and you kind of you, you alluded to as well. It's that standing before our King and just laying it out there. Like, and a lot of times that's what we have to do, and just prostrating ourselves, laying down, putting our face down, is going. Jesus, whatever you want, I'll do. I don't care. You're my king, and, I, and I'm going to serve you. you know, so, I, I mean, I, I thank you for coming on the podcast and, 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 uh, and talking with us, hanging out with us, having fun with us. Um, hope it didn't hurt your feelings too much about the skinny jeans. <laughs> if it did, I take it back, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. rip on you. He's lying. He doesn't take it back. I mean, <laughs> sorry, not sorry, but it's fun. <laughs> anyway, um, it's been great having you, brother. Nice meeting you. Uh, and, man, we're so grateful uh, for what you're doing for the kingdom, for leading people to worship and praise God more. And that's what we hope every guy here does is leaves this podcast and is inspired to worship the yeah. king more. Just worship. Just worship. That's all I can say. Just worship. Just surrender. We'll see you next time, guys, on the Guy Stuff Podcast. God bless. Thank you.